Gunshots, shelter in place warnings, then a car crash. I saw that vehicle actually like just, just as it hit, like it was just the impact and, and we had just turned that corner. I was like, what, what the heck just happened? Deputies killed a suspect in a gunfight. 30 seconds just ahead of that and we actually could have been caught in the crossfire. Tonight, a team of reporters takes you through the scary moments of the Spokane Valley gun battle this morning. A gunman is dead after a gunfight with deputies in Spokane Valley, where we were rather the local station bringing you live continuous coverage for 90 minutes straight as it happened this morning. Now tonight, our team of reporters has found new information on this developing story from what deputies are saying to the original radio calls from the scene and what witnesses saw. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Handrahan. Good to have you with us. I'm Jane McCarthy. There are two separate shooting scenes. Here's a map to better orient you. Witnesses say it all started in front of Johnson Controls. That's near the intersection of Knox and Woodruff Road. It happened around 9 o'clock this morning. The 911 caller said the suspect was intoxicated, banging on the window of the business with a pistol on his hip. When deputies arrived, they say they got into a gunfight with that suspect. They say the suspect was hit, got into his car then, and then crashed into a nearby tree. We have had crews at the scene bringing you the latest developments all day long. Crem 2's Amanda Rowley joins us live now to walk us through what happened. Amanda? Yeah, Mark and Jane, Spokane Valley Police Chief Mark Werner says the business where the shooting happened this morning is actually closed to the public and, and it deals with internet sales. Now, once law enforcement learned of the shooting, they sent out an alert Spokane call to businesses in the area. Here's a look at the scene when we first arrived this morning. Spokane Police, SWAT, fire and medical personnel were all here. Montgomery near Yokes from Logos to Dartmouth Lane was blocked off and still is. Investigators say the suspect, who has not been identified, went to a business in the Montgomery Business Park and banged on the window. Then he started firing a few rounds with what witnesses say was a handgun. The person reporting the incident was the boyfriend of a woman inside the business. That man identified the shooter as the ex-boyfriend of the woman, and he also told police he appeared intoxicated. Spokane County deputies confronted him when they arrived, but he tried to drive off in his truck. We talked to a witness who says he saw the truck crash. The was still stuck, so I didn't know if somebody was still in it. I couldn't see inside, but I just heard a loud, you know, a loud revving and the radiator was spewing, there was all sorts of smoke, um, and he slowed down and I, I saw a guy run from across the street over to the multifab building. Um, when he got to the multifab building, the guy crouched down underneath a rock. I saw another guy that was in a truck that was right there parked, he just started running, like just straight out sprint running uh, away from the scene. And I was like, I don't know if that thing's gonna explode or if there's an active gun, you know, gunfight going on. This witness here believes if he and his boss had been in the area just 30 seconds earlier, they would have been caught in the crossfire. Police say the suspect died, but no one else was injured in the shooting. And again, that suspect has not been identified. Going back out live here at the Montgomery Business Park, you can see the incident command post is set up here. Uh, investigators are processing the scene and still collecting evidence. We did see uh, about an hour ago the medical examiner is now on scene. As far as traffic going through Montgomery, Montgomery. Law enforcement say they expect Montgomery to remain closed through the evening. Reporting in Spokane Valley, Amanda Rowley, Crumb 2 News. Yeah, I was just sitting at my desk and just started hearing pop, 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 probably 15, 20 shots. Well, that man was working inside an office building a block away from the shooting, but still heard it going on. He and co-workers then heard what they believed to be SWAT officers near the suspect as well. They spoke with Krem 2's Taylor Vido about what they heard. He joins us live from the scene tonight with more on that. Taylor. Yo, guys, I'm standing at the corner of Woodruff and Knox. Down the street from me here on Knox behind me is the area where we believe the shooting originally started at this hour. As you can see behind me, it's still all blocked off. So again, the shooting happened over there. I spoke with some people in a business located in this direction where I'm looking. Even though they were a block away, they could still hear all those gunshots. It was probably 10 or 15 rounds, maybe 20, back to back to back to back. We heard a concussion grenade go off and a lot of smoke happening. Not what you'd expect to hear in a presumably sleepy business park area like this one. 
These men were working in a business building across the street from the Montgomery Business Park. Despite not seeing the shooting, they were well aware of what was happening. I shoot, so I knew that they were, there was an active shooter going on, and then we saw the police presence, so we knew something went down. Secondhand witness statements they heard turned out to be accurate. A man in a truck drove off after firing shots at suspect driving right by this doggy daycare business. We ran inside immediately, grabbed all the dogs and closed the doors and made sure none of them were outside. This man had to talk to us over the phone because employees here weren't being let outside due to the crime scene. When he poked his head outside immediately after the shooting, he saw the suspect's car after it ran into a tree. There was a car just like peeled up side of a tree. The, the tires were still spinning and smoke was in the air. Now, fortunately, nobody else was hurt. With the exception of some businesses within the crime scene, work continued on nearby. It was still hard to shake, though, what had happened just that morning. Just stay away from the windows and doors. You, you know, you fear for your safety when you hear that many shots go off. Now again, as we mentioned, Knox, this is to the south of the business park. This section of the road is still closed. No word at this point as to when it might reopen. At the same time, though, you got to realize this crime scene pretty big, all things considered, and we've seen detectives really combing through many different sections of it today. So again, hard to tell how long they could be out here this evening. Live in Spokane Valley, Taylor Vido, Crim News. Taylor, thank you very much. We will keep you updated as we learn more. You can track developments on this story right now on Crem.com. You can also find more witness accounts and deputy radio calls on the Crem2 mobile app. We also have a timeline of how this shooting unfolded. All right, switching gears to weather now. Let's get straight to meteorologist Tom Sherry for a check on the weekend weather. And Tom, looks pretty good, all things considered. It does. Look at the current temperature on this Friday evening. We're at 80 degrees right now. Wind is out of the southwest at 16 miles an hour. So we told you tonight and even a little bit of tomorrow is going to be on the breezy side. Look at the cloud cover now moving into the area. With that cloud cover, we're also seeing a few showers across northeastern Washington, northern Idaho. We may see with that see some very light rain or sprinkles here in Spokane this evening, but it should all clear out by tomorrow morning. We'll look for cloudy skies Saturday morning with decreasing clouds throughout the day and comfortable Saturday with a daytime high of 80. Uh, for Sunday, we'll look for mostly sunny skies. Should see a high of 81. I'll check your 10 day outlook in just a few minutes. Thank you, Tom. President Donald Trump projected confidence about the economy during a rally in New Hampshire, but he says his reelection is critical if voters want to protect their pocketbooks. The 401ks, down the tubes, everything's going to be down the tubes. So whether you love me or hate me, you got to vote for me. Well, back in 2016, President Trump narrowly lost New Hampshire to Hillary Clinton. And recent polls show the president is trailing Democratic frontrunner Joe Biden in New Hampshire by 10 points. During his speech, President Trump defended his ongoing trade war with China, which some economists say is partly to blame for the market plunge this week. Many voters who attended the rally say their support for the president is unwavering. I think that he proved himself a lot in the last three years. The market, the stocks, the jobs, the economy. President Trump's latest rally was held at the arena in Manchester. He says he broke the all-time attendance record previously held by Elton John. The president posted photos online showing the crowds. A reporter who attended the event backs up the president's claim, calling it a, quote, full house. He says there were only a few empty seats in the high rafters, but the arena floor was packed, he said. No word yet on the actual crowd count. A question on the 2020 census asking if you are a U.S. citizen was blocked by the U.S. Supreme Court, but there are claims floating around the Internet that the question will show up. Jason Puckett with our Verify team comes in to clear things up. We're tackling a claim about the citizenship question on the U.S. Census. For a little background, the idea proposed by the Trump administration would have added a question that asked whether people responding were a U.S. citizen or not. After a lengthy debate that wound up with the Supreme Court blocking it, the Trump administration dropped the question from the 2020 Census. But not according to this claim. It claims to show a clip from the current census form that asks if the person answering is a citizen of the United States. So what's going on here? Well, we tracked this image down to its source, a real 
document provided by the Census Bureau. It does ask if the person is a citizen of the United States, but scroll to the top, and it's not the 2020 Census form, it's the 2019 American Community Survey form. What's the difference? Well, according to the Census Bureau, the American Community Survey is sent out every year separate from the Census. It was actually created to shorten the overall Census form. The long form questions that used to be sent with the Census now come in the form of this American Community Survey. It's been sent out to a randomly selected number of households in the U.S. since 2000. There's also another separate form that has been sent to some American households, this form. It's a test form sent ahead of the 2020 census, and it was printed and mailed before the Supreme Court decision, meaning it still has the citizenship question on it. But bottom line, neither the American Community Survey nor the census test form sent out are what will show up on the 2020 census form. Those haven't been sent yet. And to go one step further, this is the 2020 census form or an informational copy provided by the Census Bureau. You can scan all the way through its eight pages and there's no citizenship question. So this image claiming a citizenship question is currently on the 2020 Census form is false. Got any other claims for us to look into? Send us an email. With your Verify, I'm Jason Puckett.